which is pretty good. It's usually some type of meat, either beef or chicken or pork mixed with some type of vegetables, potatoes or rice or, uh, you know, carrots. The second type of food we have is something which is maybe a little bit more common to you guys at home, sort of like potentially tuna helper or hamburger helper. This one, for example, is tuna noodle casserole in a little packet, and we put it in the oven and just pick it up and eat it, and it's really good. Another quick example um, of things that we eat, this is a little, little loaves of bread. I don't know if you could see them. They're about two centimeters each in size. Well, bread is a little bit of a problem up here because we have lots of crumbs and things like that will just float around, sort of like Mike was just showing me right there, things float. So we want to avoid the crumbs, so to do that, we have these little, little loaves of bread, which are a lot of fun to eat. Unfortunately, we don't have butter because we don't have a refrigerator. And then, of course... And then, of course, we always have things that, you know, our favorite things that um, our family has sent up for us to enjoy while we're up here, just to remember our family and our friends. So this is a quick little example of something that I like, which is Swedish fish. I don't know if you guys have ever tried these before. And it's always fun to throw your food around up here because it really doesn't fall. You just touch it. thing I, I didn't mention yet is how we drink things in space. You don't have a cup, so you can't have like a cup of coffee or a can of Coke, but we have drink bags. And Mike's showing you right now uh, how the drink bag actually works and how you can put your mouth on the straw and drink off the straw, but and you can make fun things with the, with the drinks that you have. You just have to remember to catch them so you don't, don't make a mess. to the uh, to the deck to catch it or else he knows I will get mad at him for making a mess in this in the lab how does eating in space affect your digestive system Well, the, uh, the fun part is getting the food into your mouth. Once it's in your mouth, uh, that's a very good question. We're actually studying the effects of that right now. We're doing an experiment called nutrition. And so we um, measure, uh, we sort of write down all the stuff that we're ingesting, all the stuff that we're eating and drinking. And then during a one-day period, first of all, first thing when we wake up in the morning is we take a blood sample. Uh, we have a centrifuge that will separate the blood, and then we freeze the blood, and it's, it's uh, in a very cold freezer that the scientists can look at when the sample gets to the ground. And we also take urine collection throughout the day. The hope is that by studying the chemistry from these samples, we can understand better just what happens with the digestive system. What does zero gravity have on how long it takes you to complete a job? You know, you know that's a really great question because it's hard to actually quantify that because some things are so easy in space and some things are really difficult in space. I'll give you an example. You see above us is feeling, right? So you think, oh, work up there. I'm going to have to stretch my arms. It's going to be really difficult. Well, it's really not that hard at all because all you have to do is flip upside down and turn around just like that, and then you can work right here and it's no problem. So that type of stuff is pretty easy. But other things, like, for example, if you wanted to do um, some type of change a page in a book because the book the page was wrong or if you wanted to sort medicines, you know, transfer little uh, capsules from one place to another. Now, that's pretty difficult. Those things don't have Velcro on them, and they don't stick. They just float all over the place. So you have to have things in little containers and very carefully move things. Uh, often, you know, we lose things in here just because they just start quietly floating away. Uh, luckily, we have got a pretty good ventilation system, and so usually we can find things that we've lost on the, on the ventilation. So that's helpful. But some things are hard and some things are easy.
How would you describe what you see when you look out the window at Earth and its stars? Well, that's a that's another really good question. You guys have some great questions. Um, I want to just show you one computer. I'm not sure you can see it real well from there, but this computer is called World Map, and what it does, it it sort of shows us our our orbit around the Earth, so we know over the Earth where we are, and it shows us when it's daytime and when it's nighttime. It helps us take some real.